Well, Wall Street protests are growing. New York, Los Angeles, Seattle, San Francisco, Albuquerque. You're looking at shots of all of them now. There is something here reminiscent of the early days of the Tea Party, which actually shares some things in common with the Wall Street occupiers. They're both grassroots organization from the ground up. They're both angry at Washington. And while most participants are sincere, there is hate in both groups. But most important, while they're on opposite sides of American politics, they agree on something huge. They both hate the bailout of the banks and share animosity to the banks in general, which we think is a sign of a real issue. Because banks should be great for America. Never mind what we do without ATMs and places to store our money. Banks mean jobs. Banks in America, and there are more than 7,000 of them, employ almost 1.8 million Americans, more than America's largest private employer, Walmart. Banks employ so many people that one bank's layoff can skew the jobs report for the entire nation. I'm talking about Bank of America, which laid off 30,000 employees in September, almost a third of the nation's total planned job cuts for the month. So we should be rooting for the banks. The problem is they make it really hard when they lash out at Washington's new rules by slapping fees on consumers. And I mean there is a tsunami of fees. Citibank hiking fees today again, set to charge $20 a month for accounts between six and $15,000. Bank of America and SunTrust, $5 debit card fees. J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo, testing $3 debit card fees. Well, I asked Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner about this last night. The banks are blaming the reforms in the government for any everything, right. including lots of problems that they themselves were central mm -hmm. to causing. And the people are terribly, most people are terribly angry and frustrated with that. Right. And they want to see things change. And what we're trying to do is to make sure that we put in place the kind of protections consumers and investors deserve. There's no, there's no, nothing strange about the fact that banks are resisting it, are pushing back. They're trying to weaken those reforms, mm -hmm. and we're going to push back harder. You're going to fight against And in, and in the end, we're going to prevail. The banks say Washington reforms have hurt them so much that the fees are the only way to make money. But that is not true. Take Bank of America. They are planning to put a $5 monthly fee on debit cards. An analyst who ran the numbers today for us tells us they will make 13% more money on that than they did before the regulations. And that's just debit fees. Bank of America is also launching $9 monthly fees on some checking accounts. Wow. Russell Goldsmith is on the Outfront Strike Team. That's the group of 20 CEOs, investors, and entrepreneurs that I picked to answer the tough questions about the economy this election season. He's the CEO and chairman of the 26th biggest bank in the country, City National. Uh, Mr. Goldsmith, good to have you with us. I appreciate it. When you look at these numbers, it is really, it, it, it's really upsetting because it just doesn't feel right. And I want to ask you the first question. Are you doing what Bank of America and some of these other big banks are doing, which is charging debit card fees or, or increasing your ATM fees? Uh, at City National Bank, we're not changing our fees at all, Aaron. Uh, we're, not, we're not putting in debit card fee charges, and we're not raising our minimums. Uh, we've made virtually no changes in our consumer fees in the last 12 months. So what is going on with, with the big banks, and, and in particular that analysis from Bank of America that even with the fees they've, they've already said they're doing, they're going to make 13 percent more than before uh, the, the regulations and the financial crisis, and that's before the new fees they're, they're about to try out? Well, you know, a lot of the biggest banks are showing a lack of sensitivity right now to the economic environment that we're in and to the kind of issues that the American people feel about. Look, the Durban Amendment is not good law. It's price fixing based on no facts, no studies. It's not right. But they're responding to it in a way that at City National and, and frankly, a number of banks are not going to raise fees. We may disagree with the law, mm -hmm. but we're, we understand the spirit of it. And we're going to absorb the cost because uh, it's the right thing to do for our clients. And, 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 and explain to me why it is that, that some of the, the mid-sized banks, like yours, are not doing it when the big banks are. Is this another case of they're just so big? They're too big. I don't think it's a question of they're too big. It's about their focus. At City National and a lot of mid-sized banks, we're the local leader. We're the big local bank. We're connected to the community. We're very focused on meeting the needs of our community. I think one of the unfortunate things for the entire banking industry, and I applaud what you said about it at the beginning, is the fact that banks are vital engines of this economy. At City National, we're lending money. Uh, lots of banks are lending money. Our people are involved. We're donating. We're volunteering. We're helping businesses get going. 
and that's being obscured over this debit card fee business. So, so what uh, and that's banks, an unfortunate message. You, and what can the banks do in general? Because, I mean, we're looking at the fees here specifically, which, which I, I have a real issue with because they're saying they just make up what they're, you know, what they're losing on the regulation. And clearly, when you look at the numbers, at least in the, in the case we gave specifically, it doesn't appear to be the case at all. But on top of that, you have just a, in general, it feels like an animosity and a tone deaf nature, especially when you're looking around the country at people who are frustrated and angry. Uh, at the banks. What should what should your industry do right now? Is this a time where you should have all the big bank CEOs stand up and, and, and talk to the protesters or do something to say we're patriotic and want to build this country too? Well, I think, you know, I'm here talking to you trying to explain that at City National we're not doing uh, what some of these big guys are doing. Unfortunately, this inappropriate law this price fixing got paid got passed in the middle of the night uh, there are no facts and uh, nobody knows what the facts are and the banks obviously can't sit down as a group and agree on pricing that would be illegal if this had been done in a more appropriate regulatory framework okay. maybe it would have worked out better but I think the best thing to do like we're doing is just leave your prices where they are run your business absorb this at least while this economy is so tough and help America get through it as we're all doing by making loans and uh, providing investment advice and doing a bunch of things Russell. that are more important, frankly, than this, but are being obscured by this issue. Russell Goldsmith, thanks very much. We appreciate it.